Designed by the famous engineer Brunel, the Clifton Suspension Bridge was completed 90 years ago. Priority job. Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now this morning I am in Kensal Green Cemetery and we have come to find the final resting place of Isambard Kingdom Brunel, um, who was born in Portsmouth, Kitty, um, and was a well-known, obviously, architect, um, <laughs> inventor, uh, anything else and everything else. You think about it, he's got his name to it. But I think his biggest thing that he's well-known for is a um, underground tunnel that runs under the Thames, which is still used today, I believe, by the rail network. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit more about him real soon. Now, if you like the video today, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And if you um, haven't done so already, maybe subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down below. Are you a fan of architect work, you know? Um, <laughs> not many people are, are they? Are you? <laughs> well, some are, I should imagine. My tan's actually looking quite good because it's raining here today, so uh, that won't live long, will it, my tan? Um, yeah, so if you, if you know a lot about Isambard Kingdom Brunel and you like the history of, it, of him as well, um, let me know down below with the comments section. Other than that, I'll tell you a little bit more about him now and we're going to find his final resting place. Isambard Kingdom Brunel was born on the 9th of April 1806 in Britain Street, Portsea, Portsmouth, Hampshire where his father was working on block-making machinery. He was named Isambard after his father, the French civil engineer, Sir Marc Isambard Brunel, and Kingdom after his English mother, Sophia Kingdom. His mother's sister, Elizabeth Kingdom, was married to Thomas Mudge Jr., son of Thomas Mudge, the horologist. He had two elder sisters, Sophia, the eldest child, and Emma. The whole family moved to London in 1808 for his father's work. Brunel had a happy childhood despite the family's constant money worries, with his father acting as his teacher during the early years. His father taught him drawing and observational techniques from the age of four and Brunel had learned geometry by eight. During this time he learned to speak French fluently and the basic principles of engineering. He was encouraged to draw interesting buildings and identify any faults in their structure. When Brunel completed his studies at Henry IV in 1822, his father had him presented as a candidate at the renowned engineering school Ecole Polytechnic, but as a foreigner, he was deemed ineligible for entry. Brunel subsequently studied under the prominent master, clock master and horologist Abraham Louis Berouge, who praised Brunel's potential in letters to his father. In late 1822, having completed his apprenticeship, Brunel returned to England. He worked for several years as an assistant engineer on the project to create a tunnel under London's River Thames between Rother Five and Wapping. With tunnellers driving a horizontal shaft from one side of the river to the other under the most difficult and dangerous conditions. The project was funded by the Thames Tunnel Company and Brunel's father, Mark, was the chief engineer. In 1865, the East London Railway Company purchased the Thames Tunnel for £200,000 and four years later, the first trains passed through it. Subsequently, the tunnel became part of the London Underground system and remains in use today, originally as part of the East London Line, now incorporated into the London Overground. Brunel is perhaps best remembered for the designs for the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol, begun in 1831. The bridge was built to designs based on Brunel's, but with significant changes. Spanning over 702 foot and nominally 249 foot above the River Avon, it had the longest span of any bridge in the world at the time of construction. Brunel submitted four designs to a committee headed by Thomas Talford, but Talford rejected all entries proposing his own design instead. Opposition from the public forced the organising committee to hold a new competition which was won by Brunel. In the early part of Brunel's life, the use of railways began to take off as a major means of transport for goods. This influenced Brunel's involvement in railway engineering, including railway bridge engineering. 
In 1833, before the Thames Tunnel was complete, Brunel was appointed Chief Engineering of the Great Western Railway, one of the wonders of the Victorian Britain, running from London to Bristol and later Exeter. The company was funded at a public meeting in Bristol in 1833 and was incorporated by the Act of Parliament in 1835. Brunel had proposed extending its transport network by boat from Bristol across the Atlantic Ocean to New York City before the Great Rest Western Railway opened in 1835. The Great Western Steamship Company was formed by Thomas Gubby for this purpose. It was widely disputed whether it would be commercially viable for a ship powered purely by steam to make such long journeys. Technological developments in the early 1830s included the invention of the surface condenser, which allowed boilers to run on salt water without stopping to be cleaned, made longer journeys more possible, but it was generally thought that the ship would not be able to carry enough fuel for the trip and have enough room for commercial cargo. On the 10th of June 1830, Brunel was elected as a Fellow of the Royal Society. He married Mary Elizabeth Horsley on the 5th of July 1836. She came from a, an accomplished musical and artistic family, being the eldest daughter of composer and organist William Horsley. They established a home at Duke Street, Westminster in London. While performing a conjuring trick for the amusement of his children in 1843, Brunel accidentally inhaled half a sovereign coin, which became lodged in his windpipe. A special pair of forceps failed to remove it, as did a machine devised by Brunel to shake it loose. At a suggestion of his father, Brunel was strapped to a board and turned upside down and the coin was jerked free. He recuperated at Tainmouth and enjoyed the area so much that he purchased an estate at Watcombe in Torquay, Devon. Here he commissioned William Byrne to design Brunel Manor and its gardens to be his country home. He never saw the house or gardens finished as he died before it was completed. Brunel was a heavy smoker who had been diagnosed with Bright's disease. He suffered a stroke on the 5th of September 1859, just before the Great Eastern made her first voyage to New York. He died 10 days later at the age of 53 and was buried like his father in Kensal Green Cemetery, London. He is commemorated at Westminster Abbey in a window on the south side of the nave. So there's all the information there on Isambard Kingdom Brunel. And uh, you think about what he did for modern day um, architecture work. Gonna have a little look for his final resting place now. This is such a big cemetery, it really is. And do you know what? I think I found it. Now I'm just going on a little bit of a, I can't quite see that it's definitely him. However, I've seen a picture of the headstone. That looks like it. So we're gonna head straight there now. And the one that I am pointing to from the path is this white square one. Now, if I'm wrong, <laughs> I'll give up. <laughs> but I saw a picture of it earlier on and it does look like his and Yes. So there we go. So there's obviously um, father above, and then we come down, there's Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Civil engineer, only son of Sir Mark Isambard Brunel, born April the 9th, 1806 in Portsmouth. Yay, doesn't say that. Uh, and, and he died September the 15th, 1859. And obviously the rest of the family are all there as well. The final resting place of Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Uh, what a name though, uh, to call your son Kingdom as his middle name and then for him to go on and do the things that he did is amazing. So a uh, massive thank you to the whole family. Um, I like this, he has raised his own monument by his public works at Portsmouth, Chatham and the Thames Tunnel. There we go. So, uh, you know, all the good ones come out Portsmouth. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bless you. So there we have it. Um, and to be honest, until I started researching the cemetery, I didn't realise that this is where he's buried. I didn't even know, to be honest with you, uh, where he was buried. So it's, um, it's good when you start researching these things and looking into them and you find out where people's final resting places are. And I should imagine that's why you like watching the videos, because you like to see where people are and things like that, which is great. And uh, 
of course it's um it's fascinating isn't it it's still to this day you know i've been sort of doing this not in a, an official capacity i haven't been filming it but since i was a kid i used to go into the cemetery next door to where my mum lived i grew up there i used to feed the crows and i used to read the headstones and one thing that i will say to everyone is it's not about the start date it's not about the end date it's about that line in the middle what you do with that line in the middle is your life and that's what counts um, and I learned that very quickly as a kid because it used to fascinate me and I used to think wow so that's the that's the important part um, and I just got it straight away never really paid attention to it <laughs> made a few mistakes along the way but you know it's a it's a, an important thing to, to think about if you've never thought about that before it's that line in the middle that's your life that's the bit that people will remember anyway on that note isn't bar kingdom brunel portsmouth <laughs> i will see you all on the next one take it easy Ta -da.